Boy, Mike, you look at the numbers. Uh, Lafayette throws for 217 yards. Another terrific day by Drew Reed, 18 for 24, as he throws three touchdown passes. Make it four touchdown passes for Drew Reed. How about Brandon Hall's day? Six catches, 101 yards. Uh, just a just a terrific day for the Lafayette Leopards. And they just really kind of spread it around today, and Drew Reed off to a little bit of a shaky start after an incompletion <laughs> so not much of a shaky start but uh, when they began to run the football in that second half they really kind of distanced themselves and then put a lot of pressure on Nolan and came up with three big interceptions but spreading the football around good offensive line play in the second half they ran the football for 75 yards in the second half and we talked about not worrying about so many yards but 36 times they ran the football and they committed to that and that's a, a testament to the offensive line and Mickey Fine. And we should put the Colgate loss in perspective. That's one loss. They play the Leopards next week. If they give the Leopards a loss we're right back in that co-champion kind of mess. And of course Lafayette still has Lehigh. Colgate will play Lehigh the week after they play Lafayette. Let's go to the highlights of today's ball game. Plenty of them. Well, that first quarter kind of started off with Lafayette stopping them. The Hoyas on defense and then getting the football back for Drew Reed. And this really was a huge play on fourth down. Drew Reed's going to step up in the pocket, two hands on the football, deliver a strike to Demetrius Dixon, and then he makes some outstanding moves and does a great job to get this ball into the end zone for the touchdown. And that 7 0 lead was Lafayette's. And then we move to the second quarter here. Not much else happened in that first quarter. The second quarter saw the Georgetown Hoyas kind of establish that running game. They ran the ball today for 30, 147 yards on 32. This is a Campanella touchdown uh, just outside from about 37 yards. That made it 7-7. And then Lafayette started to take the football away. This one, Jared Roberts down inside the red zone, gives the ball back to his offense. Drew Reed in the offense responds. Another fourth down and eight right there. Completion and then good offensive line push puts Sherman in the end zone for that 14-7 lead. And uh, Coach Devani not very happy at the end of the first half. You heard him talk to John Leone about that. But coming out in the second half, they kind of established the run, and that opened things up for guys like Mike Duncan. Back of the end zone, 21-7 Lafayette. A quick turnover here by Nolan. He's going to get the ball up the field. He's going to turn around and throw the ball to, down the field. But Draylon James is going to pick it off, even though he fumbles. The Oliver Davis jumps on that fumble. The second turnover turns into a score for Crean, and that's a 28-7. So Lafayette at this point kind of piling it on. Great pressure by Kashim Hill up the middle. That's going to turn into a, a uh, Ingram interception, setting Lafayette up for another touchdown. This one's going to go to the all-time touchdown leader at Lafayette uh, College in receiving. That's Mark Ross, and Mark's going to make it 35-7. Lafayette gave up a couple touchdowns at the end, but this was a huge one right here. This is... A big return by Smalley after running through a lot of traffic. And this is his second return of the year, over 98 yards. This one set a record. Officially, they gave him a 99-yard kickoff return. And he's going to take it all the way to the house. A great picture, great camera work by our guys there. And Lafayette goes on to win the football game 45-27. to Here's John and the coach. Yeah, thanks, Gary. Uh, Coach, you know, in this day of the Internet, uh, th word travels quickly, whether you got it or not. And I know it's a process, long way to go. How about Bucknell beating Colgate? Leopards all alone in first place. Well, just very proud of our young men and the effort today. You know, we weren't playing our best football. And again, you know, compliments to Georgetown and, and, and uh, Kevin. He does. They just do a great job. Uh, they must really dislike us. They play their best football against us as we knew they would. But uh, we were determined. I had a little chat there on the field before we went in the locker room, and uh, enough said, and we came out and did what we had to do. It was a tremendous effort. Well, whatever you said, Coach, and again, I don't think I've ever talked to a coach as fired up up seven at halftime, but 21 nothing in the second half, you really put it together. The kids responded well. Well, you know, once again, you don't turn the ball over. You get some takeaways. We kept playing, playing, playing. At the end there, we put a lot of subs in, and we got people hurt. We said, keep the ball in front of us. I, hey, we just run out the clock, and uh, don't matter. They go down and get some points. So, uh, you know, again, proud of our young men. This is where our seniors want it to be. They've worked for it. They've talked about it. And, uh, you know, once again, hey, we still control what's in front of us. And what's in front of us is a lot yet. So, and uh, we'll enjoy this for four hours. At least the staff will get off the bus and go right to work on Colgate. The team will enjoy it. They're going to take care of each other tonight. And uh, just very happy and proud, uh, you know, this football team and our coaching staff. One last question, Coach. I want to get to our players of the game. Complimentary football. You've talked about it a lot. Every component helped today. You got a touchdown from the special teams. Uh, you got a touchdown from the run game, from the pass game, obviously. Uh, and, and the defense uh, held, held serve. Well, you need all three phases. And, again, you know, we were able to put that together. 
it's, uh, it's been a while since we got consecutive wins and, and those things. And, and again, so, you know, it was a, it's a great win, and uh, we know what we have to do. 3-0, Coach. Go get him next week. We'll see you back in Fisher Field for a change. It'll be nice to come home. Yes, it will. Coach, let's turn quickly to Matt Smalley, special teams return man extraordinaire. I'll take a little French to you, Matt. Hey, listen. Uh, We'll get to the 98-yard touchdown return, uh, your kickoff return, your second one of the season. But tell us about the defensive secondary, the adversity you guys have faced throughout the year. Lots of guys down. It was, uh, and I'm told, I'm sorry, it was a 99-yard. I don't want to take anything away from his 99. Talk to us about the defensive secondary, how you guys have overcome the kind of adversity you have this year with all the injuries. Well, yeah, we had, I mean, we did have a lot of injuries this year. And, um, I mean, we battled through it as a, as a defensive unit, period. But as a defensive back unit, you know, uh, we all come together as a, as the guys. Talk, we talk to each other and say, you know, the only, the guys who play, you know, we have to play. You know, you, not, we're not, we don't have any time for guys to be young. You know, everybody has to step up and play. And, you know, we came to play today. We got a couple people back and we came to play today. I think we played good today. There's a different kind of hop in your step out there as a group. I think from the second half of the Harvard game up to the point of, of today, uh, obviously the performance last weekend's Holy Cross. Talk about uh, the offense, their emergence, and how that kind of filters over and helps you guys on the defensive side. Yeah, when, when, when offense does good, is where, you know, we feel really good because, you know, we, we'll get to figure out an offense score. It's like, you know, we feel, we feel unstoppable. We feel like we can, you know, accomplish anything because uh, what offense, offense has been playing very well. You know, compliments to Demetrius. He had a great game today. And, you know, our quarterback and our offensive line had a great push. And I, I just want to thank everybody. They all, they all, they did a good job on offense today. Whole different atmosphere, Matthew. And I'll tell you what, congratulations on a great win. A lot of work to do. Now we go home, a couple of games and then the big one uh, later on in November. Yeah, yeah. Good luck to you, Thanks. Matthew. Good deal. Let's turn to Demetrius Dixon. Which side are you going to go on, Demetrius? Oh, I'm trying. I'm trying to cover him, and I can't. <laughs> Demetrius, uh, listen. Now you told me you looked just a minute ago. You said, "Was it a catch?" And our guys in the truck—they don't miss a trick. That was a tremendous catch that was taken away from you, but you got to rebound from it. Right. That's exactly what happened. I mean, I went up and trying to get it. I felt like I got it. So, and I got up. I was trying to let the ref know. You know, I got it. I caught it, but. At that point, once he makes a call, all I can do is play the next play. We were talking a lot about the young freshman, Drew Reed, who's given a spark to this offense. And, and Mike Joseph talks about it a lot. There, not that there's never incentive. I mean, you've got to be disciplined as a wide receiver. You've got to do your job. You've got to run your routes. But when you know that the check downs are there and on any play, there's a real possibility that the ball could be coming your way, how does that impact your approach to every play? I mean, you just got to always be aware and know that, especially because, you know, he can get out the pocket and you know, makes pretty good decisions. So once you're finished running your route, we always get preached on a scramble drill. So once he gets out of the pocket, you know, we have we have our scramble drill going and he can get you the ball. You know what I mean, so uh, you, you, you always be, be aware of that. Yeah, you run yourself open. That's right. exactly what you guys did. And again, I think uh, every component of this football team seems to be coming together. You heard the energy in Matt Smalley's voice and now the wide receiver group, the running back. Uh, Greg Kessel is giving you guys a lift in complimenting and helping out Ross Sherman a little bit. So you guys are clicking. You got, uh, you know, uh, you come home for a couple games before the big one. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, about the team energy going into the uh, home stretch? Well, we feel pretty good, especially because we start off the season kind of slow. You know, getting into the league, we're, we accomplish exactly what we want to accomplish. We came into the beginning of the season saying we want, we want to win it all. We want to win the league. So right now we're in a position to do so. So we, we have a high energy, high hopes, and just keep doing what we're doing. You know, Demetrius, uh, you guys deserve a lot of credit. You face a lot of adversity early. It's, a lot of times, you know, it's that cliche stuff that you you got to keep plugging away. You guys have done it. You've picked yourself off the mat. You control your own destiny. Good luck as we return home, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. You got it. Gary, Michael, uh, you know, a game on uh, that was a team that was hitting on all cylinders and a great performance. Let's go back home. It'll be good to get back to Easton. Boy, no question about it. And to go back home with a 45-27 victory and be the only undefeated team in the Patriot League, that all sounds very, very good. My thanks to Mike Joseph, John Leone, of course, our RCN television team headed up by Rick Keel. To all of you, join us next Saturday, 3.30, as Lafayette takes on Colgate. For now, we're 3-0. For all of us, I'm Gary Laubach. Goodbye, everybody.